What's up, guys? Camera Foose here at FooseLurks.com. It is July 24th. Just wanted to do a little video review of Cala, one of the trades here this morning. Uh, a great example of a trade that was basically manifested from the watch list, turned out into a F1 breakout pattern, uh, and is now breaking out of a revival pattern. So really kind of a triple threat here uh, of how, you know, a really good trade goes down. Basically, this was on the watch list last night. Uh, basically, as this was forming up a potential revival pattern, we'll take you to yesterday's day. <clears throat> we were watching this stock yesterday. They had a nice F1 that singles and doubles played. Uh, it made a nice trade on there, but it did actually come back and close red on the day. But what going back towards that 13 PMA, which is always, you know, kind of a trend indicator that I follow on the daily chart. If we look at the, the daily chart here, uh, we're actually in a revival pattern. We got that lean in bearish trend, uh, followed by a stock that's kind of made a neckline right around 970 here. Uh, and, you know, if it did bounce off this $8 area or the 13 PMA, it could start pushing back up towards a potential breakout here on CALA. And you can see here the stock is up huge, up 29% today. And we got in right at the beginning of this move basically by identifying the F1 breakout pattern, which is basically just a flag consolidation breakout pattern that happens within the first two hours. Typically for me, uh, you know, I only trade for the first hour or so, not even two hours, because all the F1s happen typically within first, you know, two minutes, three minutes. Sometimes it takes 30 minutes. Uh, but a lot of times all my trades happen within the first, you know, uh, three to 15 minutes, and that's the beginning of an F1 breakout pattern. So looking back at Cala here, we did see that nice gap open on CALA. A lot of times when these gap open stocks or F1s, the first thing the stock does, we'll see a quick pullback towards the 13 EMA on the one minute intraday chart. And that's exactly what we saw here. And I actually did buy right here at 8.40 once we saw this little spike in price action uh, as I was anticipating the F1 breakout here right over uh, whatever buy price was, it was 8.42. So I got in at 8.40. 3,000 shares looking for that F1 breakout here and kind of the rule of thumb for, you know, at least a partial position on an F1 is just to follow the 13 EMA on the one minute intraday chart. That kind of is just indicating the short term trend of whether or not or how much the morning spike is going to run. Sometimes it's just a quick morning spike and that's all you get. Sometimes this thing's running all day as you can see here. Cala is still going and pushing up towards highs of days at 1045 because it also did break out at about 970 of the daily <laughs> with four plus. Uh, but looking at the intraday trend here, I did end up selling, uh, you know, my initial target was uh, $9 on this uh, first trade as it did break the F1 at 840. As always, I like to use pool numbers as kind of target areas. So I did sell think what was it 1500 shares or half my position right around the 892 area and then right after i sold this thing just absolutely started ripping giving that really big nice spike in volume so unfortunately i sold a little bit earlier there it looked like it was kind of topping out topping out in the nine area so i wanted to lock in partial gains from there this thing just continued up kind of right in the 13 ema and actually had a secondary breakout here uh, at 962, which was basically the daily chart breakout there. So that was kind of a double breakout on the intraday chart that it kind of halted in that zone about 960 to 970, which was the actual revival pattern breakout. And once this thing did break out of that zone, this thing is just absolutely started ripping. So I just sold another 500 shares. Uh, I believe it'd be 1020 for something. So right now I'm up about $3,700 on this trade within the first two hours of the day. So this is a really great move, a 30% ripper here. That was just a really all around uh, perfect trade from being on the watch list, manifesting and watching pre-breakout of the revival to an F1 breakout pattern that we actually used to identify our entry point and also the revival pattern now breaking out at 970. And now the stock is up at near highs today at 30%. Uh, currently at $3,700, still have a thousand shares left for potential swing as this is just day one of the breakout here. Uh, you know, we could continue to see more upside at 11 or 12, upwards of $15 per share. You know, who knows how high these, uh, stocks are going to run. All you really can do is buy into the pattern and manage risk from there. Uh, you know, locking profits on the way up. If you want to swing, follow the trend, follow the 13 EMA 
and you know decide as long as uh, you know the stock is still indicating indicating a bullish trend, continue to hold for that swing, or set profit targets when you're holding unders. Uh, so still on that thousand shares, you can see Cal this thing uh, has the ability to make big moves. We saw this thing run from about ten dollars per share upwards of thirty dollars per share uh, in December of 2014. So this stock has the ability to make big moves like we just saw here today of 30%. Uh, but anyways, guys, that's it on Kala. Another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, a couple shorting techniques that I've been using lately. Uh, I did just open up uh, another shorting account for $35,000 with SpeedTraderPro.com. It's basically just SpeedTrader is what I use for my long account. SpeedTraderPro is another brokerage, uh, essentially, that they use that has a little bit better um, uh, shorting capabilities, and it's actually a different pricing structure on a per share basis. So uh, just open up a separate account to really kind of hone in my shorting skills. I'm not going to be alerting them, uh, but you will be hearing me talk about them on QTV and in the chat, you know, indicating some kind of shorts I'm looking at. But most of them are just really, really quick scalps. And, you know, me trying to alert all these things is just going to fuck with me trying to, you know, become better at shorting. So really, it's just me developing my developing my own personal shorting abilities rather than trying to teach it because I'm really not exactly, you know, per se an expert like I am in the Q sports strategy at shorting. But a lot of times what I look for in shorts, for instance, say here on dust, I did hit this yesterday for a nice short uh, and then again today for a nice short as well. I actually stopped out of this one for break even because I didn't take my quick profits with shorting. A lot of times I only take, uh, you know, very, very quick profits. I never take a swing. Um, I'm just a scalper right now on shorts. But what I look for are stocks that are potentially gapping open or they are gapping open. They're kind of in an oversold territory on the daily chart. You can see dust here uh, had that huge rip yesterday, start gapping open again today. So there's probably a likelihood that people are going to start locking in profits. And a lot of times what happens here on these uh, gap opens is uh, either it's a failed F1 breakout or it's actually just a reverse F1. Flag. What we saw here on dust actually shorted right around the 3820 zone. Once it started pulling back here, uh, it was basically an F1 that triggered right into the gates here at about 3810 or 3809. And once that starts showing signs of a failed breakout there, a lot of times you'll see a quick reversal, especially on a gap open stock that's already oversold on the daily chart. You can see here the RSI is up pretty high. On the daily chart, and this has made a huge run to the likelihood of a big gap open uh, with profit takers. You know, it's pretty probable, uh, but you can see this thing's kind of all over the place. Dust sometimes has some really, really big intraday swings. But I did have a nice profit there of over a dollar on my shares. Unfortunately, I was kind of going for a bigger swing. I wanted to see it come down and fill this gap down here at about 36.44, uh, but I ended up stopping out of this thing. Uh, right around for break even once this did actually end up breaking F1 again kind of with the same thing that we saw on uh, Kala on the gap open it came back down tested that one minute intraday chart on the 13 EMA consolidated and then formed an F1 and broke out so I could have scalped this for almost a dollar per share and lost my profits unfortunately I was going for a little bit bigger swing ended up stopping out here uh, BUST but another example was high tech of which I did make a nice short on uh, here this morning. Uh, only 200 shares, but I took it for over a dollar per share uh, on a point basis. So I did get short on this stock basically again. This thing had a huge ramp up yesterday uh, from eight of, uh, it was actually an F1 and an F2 breakout on iTech. So basically using the fourth strategy of Q's for part two, iTech had a nice rip from eight all the way up to now $18 per share. Uh, but what I looked at for a short on this stock this morning was basically, again, a stock that's in the oversold territory on the daily chart, and that's gapping up and pushing into a whole number. I, mean, I don't think I said this on dust, but I look for that breakout over a whole number, and typically I try to short when it pops into that whole number uh, in the $0.20 cent to $0.50 cent range. So as you can see, this broke 18 it ramped up to 18.50 really quick and then started pulling back. So I got short here at about 18.30, I believe it was, and then covered my position down here at about 17.50. Only 200 shares, but a very small position. But uh, it makes it a lot easier to short when you go 
in a small position because the, the swings that happen on these intraday moves on these stocks, especially like iTech, which is very, very volatile, if you go in big, you can easily get stopped out and not actually play the chart. Uh, you know, you're playing dollar signs rather than playing the actual chart. So uh, basically what I look for, again, is a stock that's in the oversold territory on the daily chart, gapping up into a whole number and basically getting a nice little pop, which basically creates a trap over that whole number, which you saw here on 18. And from there, pulled back, basically failed that first intraday break and came back down over a dollar. I scalped it short on 200 shares and pulled about a $300 trade on iTech short. But anyways, guys, that's a little uh, tip for what I've been looking for on my shorts lately. I'm really getting better hang of this. Hopefully one day I can create a DVD and also have some really solid alerts on the short side. As of right now, you know, my expertise still lies on the long side with the three to four pattern. But anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Haven't been doing very many video lessons uh, lately. Hopefully we can get back into that. I've just been so busy with some other really exciting things that we got coming up. Uh, but anyways, guys, I'm out of here. Chilling at my mom's house in Oregon. I'm going camping.